That's all I'll do for Sabbath morning. <laughs> Got five grandkids. If you're a vegetarian, let me see. I wonder if I could <laughs> lift this. You will feel a lot better. I, you know, I've been playing racquetball with a few of the uh, gentlemen here. I, I can see Dane back there. Dane, am I in good health? Okay, he's been playing racquetball with me. The idea that you don't get enough uh, carbohydrates or you don't get enough protein if you're a vegetarian, that is a total myth. You get plenty of protein, and the people who are saying you need protein, they're often saying you need a lot more than you really need. Uh, the fact is that some of the people who are living the longest, they're vegetarians. I went to, to Australia with a family a couple of years ago, and while we were there, we went to visit what they call the Australia Zoo and we were introduced to Harriet the tortoise. This is a picture I actually took. It's an amazing story. Harriet the tortoise was first picked up in 1845 by Charles Darwin. Actually, Charles Darwin thought it was Tom, Dick, and Harry, and for years they thought Harriet was Harry. And after living in England for a few years, they were about the size of dinner plates when he brought them to England. A couple of them died. Tom and Dick died. Harry survived, but Darwin felt bad because it wasn't doing well. Put him on a whaling ship, sent him to Australia. Harry lived in botanical gardens there, and the poor thing, they tried to force unnatural relations on him for years so that he would breed, not knowing that Harry was really a Harriet. <laughs> then he was finally sold to the Australia Zoo, she, and uh, oldest living creature on earth that they know of right now, 175 or 6 years of age, vegetarian. So if you eat a vegetarian diet, you'll look like that. No. <laughs> Number five, what items are specifically mentioned by God as being unclean and forbidden in the Bible? You know, there are some things God says you shouldn't eat at all. They're unclean, they're an abomination, don't eat them. And the list is given in Leviticus 11 verse 3. It says, Among the animals, whatever divides the hoof, having cloven hoofs and chewing the cud, that you may eat. So an animal needed both characteristics. It needed to chew the cud, you know, like a cow or sheep or goat, and it needed to have the cloven hoof, and they were considered to be clean animals if they had those two characteristics. If they did not have those two characteristics among the mammals, they should not be eaten. Now, some of you have heard about the, um, the nutritional pyramid that uh, has been released by the, uh, the health industries of uh, North America. You've probably seen this before. It talks about the foods you should eat the most of and the foods you should eat the least of for health. And at the bottom, they've got the breads and the cereals, the rice, the pasta. In group one, that's, that's supposed to be really what should combine the bulk of your diet. Then they put in group two, the fruits and the vegetables. I really think that ought to be on the bottom tier. And then at the, they've got, you know, the meats and the cheeses and the animal products at the top. And then they've got the fats and the oils. You know, I think you'd be a lot better if you just cut the top two tiers off that pyramid. You'd live a lot longer, you'd feel a lot better, and you would have a lot less problems with disease. You'd have more energy. Now, I'll tell you, I know this personally. Don't laugh, but I'm going to show you an old picture. I had a business selling steaks, and you can see part of the sign there on the Volkswagen. It says wholesale prime beef steaks. I got into this meat business where I would buy sections of beef, I'd butcher them, I drove around the desert cities in my Volkswagen with a refrigerated cooler in the back, and I sold butchered steaks. But I had the best cuts for myself. And I was eating steak literally three times a day. I'd have New York steak for, and eggs for breakfast. I'd have filet mignon for lunch. And I'd have uh, T-bone for dinner. And I had a voracious appetite and a 30-inch waist. It was amazing. And then I'd top it off with a quart of ice cream before I went to bed. I immediately noticed I was not feeling as well eating the rich diet. And I became a vegetarian before I joined the Seventh-day Adventist Church. It wasn't for me some religious criteria. And it was just because I learned so much while I was selling meat about meat and the problems and with the industry and, and the sanitation issues. I thought, man, this stuff is it's not clean. And the animals aren't all healthy and they still sell it. If, if Sometimes if they don't know what else to do with it, it turns into hamburger. And if people only knew what I knew, 
it'd be a lot easier for you to appreciate the vegetarian diet. Stay tuned. Pastor Doug will be right back with this week's special free offer. Hello, friends. I'm supposing that you know that Amazing Facts is 100% viewer supported. If you have appreciated these programs, if it's been a source of encouragement for you, and if it's blessed your life, we'd love to hear from you. The only way we can stay on this network and these stations is because viewers just like you contact us and let us know. Why don't you drop us a line or even go to the website, amazingfacts.org, and send us a note of encouragement and support so we can stay on the air. Does it matter what we eat? Pray over a plate full of cholesterol, ask God to bless it, that's mocking God. People who think that Christianity and what you eat, there's no connection, have you forgotten how we got into all this trouble? It began way back in the Garden of Eden, somebody eating something they weren't supposed to eat. Thank you for joining us for this broadcast. If you've missed any of our Amazing Facts programs, visit our website at AmazingFacts.org. There you'll find an archive of all our television and radio programs, including Amazing Facts Presents, Central Study Hour, Everlasting Gospel, Bible Answers Live, and Wonders in the Word. You'll also find a storehouse of biblical resources geared towards answering some of your most difficult questions. And our online Bible school is just a click away. One location, so many possibilities. AmazingFacts.org. Friends, the good news is that it's not God's will you suffer from poor health. The amazing fact is this, that most people bring disease and illness upon themselves by the lifestyle choices they make. But by following God's Bible secrets of health and healing, you can experience abundant life. God wants you to have a clear mind, a firm step, and to be healthy and happy. We'd like to send you a free gift that contains the Bible's amazing teaching on health. It's called God's free health plan and we'll send it to you absolutely free. Just call our toll-free number on the screen and ask for offer number 139. You can also write us at Amazing Facts, offer number 139, P.O. Box 1058, Roseville, California, 95678. Well, that's all the time we have today for this edition of Amazing Facts Presents. Until we meet again, remember the encouraging promise of Jesus. If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. This is your last chance to take advantage of this week's special free offer. There is no cost or obligation. Just call the toll-free number on your screen, and be sure to note the offer number when you make your request.